This time on Pedalbox, we're just cutting up more parts to put back together again as we make the hinges to go on the front of the bonnet on the kit car. So to hinge the bonnet, we're going to use a pair of Audi TT hinges because why break the habit of a project? Um, now these have little gas rams on the front, but we're probably going to move the gas rams further back because the bonnet is very long and it's not hugely stable at the moment and we don't want it to bend at the midpoint where it comes around here. That's the weakest point on the bonnet. It basically could flex like that if there was too much strength on it and there might be with the gas rams right at the front. So we've pulled the gas ram off this one and you can see how the bonnet works. Now normally these would be at the back and they would lift up and the bonnet would open forwards. We're running these the other way around. Two bolt holes on the inside will go on to the inside edge of the headlight mounts and these will basically lift up like this. Now the motion on the bonnet should be that it comes up and away so we're not going to clash with the very front lip so it should just lift it up and away and we can stop it at whatever point we want based on the gas rams at this end and where they run to so we can cut the mount at the very back off we're just going to lose this off here that's the the gas ram mount so we can lose that piece probably drill this um, this mount out as well so we don't need that and then we're going to build a frame that connects these two hinges together at the very front and that means because there's very very little flex in this anywhere we're not going to have much room for error we can keep these dead parallel drop them in bolt them onto the front here and then we can attach the bonnet and work everything out from there so we've made up a little frame here to support our hinges and the reason we've had to do this is to try and guarantee as best we can that everything stays true. The hinges we did for the, for the engine bay cover on the back of the car, we could have loads of slop in them because we made them and there's loads of slop in the mechanism. Unfortunately, these being VW Audi hinges, they are made by people who know how to make a hinge. So there's no play, there's no flex or give or anything in these, which means that when we're mounting them, they have to be absolutely dead true. Otherwise it will all just bind up and we'll be kind of screwed. So we've made this little frame that holds it all in line. We've got some studs welded in here that, uh, that we can screw everything down onto and this all moves quite nicely. So we're gonna drop this in the car and start figuring out where the brackets from the body onto the bottom halves the hinges have to go to. And just like that, the uh, bonnet hinges are all screwed in place. So we've got a bunch of little L brackets underneath now that are on the uh, front ex uh, chassis extensions and they're bolted on to our hinges. I would love to show you what they look like, but they're kind of up in there. So no joke, we have just finished tacking this in and we haven't moved it yet. And now we get to see if the hinges actually work. Chris is watching down the bottom just to make sure that it's not gonna completely destroy something as we lift. Okay, I think that's it getting caught on the front lip. I think that's collision happening here. So you okay. might have to shave this quarter pipe back. Oh yeah, I see why. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Can you just push the front on just the... to get yeah. it past? Yeah. Hey, yeah. it worked. Yeah, it all seems happy. I don't see anything bending. I think we just won. Other than clearance fit, that works. And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> if not, Utterly amazed. Wow. I can't believe that. <laughs> I did not expect to get that right first time. <laughs> well, in true pedal box fashion, something we said earlier about the plan was absolute rubbish. So you saw us cut off the hinge points at the front of the, uh, sorry, the gas ram points on the front of the hinge, and that was worthless. 
frankly, because just for a laugh, we put them back on. And not only do they fit perfectly, but they hold it. They hold it absolutely fine. It goes all the way up and it pins and the whole thing just works. So we've welded them back on. <laughs> I'm, I'm still amazed that it worked. I know we thought about it and we planned it and we made sure that everything was going to work and we took a lot of care over it, but I'm still surprised that it actually worked as planned. Unlike a lot of the rest of the car, a fair bit of thought's gone into how the front's going to look. I mean, thought by aid, not by me. I haven't really thought about that, any of this at all. But his plan is to use a couple more pieces of the same round tube that we've used for a lot of the rest of the skeleton, carry it on from the headlights down and in, following that line in, and then another piece across the bottom matching this contour, and then we fill in the whole thing with a nice big piece of sheet metal. So we get a kind of, I guess you could almost call it the beginnings of a front end, a, a proper actual front of the car, and I think that's where the number plate's going. All the air intake and everything is gonna be underneath. Now. As usual for us, this means we're building a frame and then skinning it, so uh, nothing particularly new there process-wise, but let's get cracking. I'm still in awe of the fact that this worked and I know we put a lot of time measuring to make sure that everything was going parallel but the fact that a plan that we had for something that really mattered worked right off the bat is still slightly mind-boggling to me. Yeah it's kind of unusual for us because as much as we do you know we do make an effort to try and get we stuff try. right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's always kind of surprising when stuff works out first time, even with all the effort, because there's a couple of yeah. bits of dashboard framing that we were working on last episode. They took us three goes <laughs> to get right, and that was like four pieces of, of steel. <laughs> Not even that, it was two pieces that were already there, and then we had to butcher it again, having already butchered it once. Yeah, it just... and then the bonnet with its like two parallel four link, um, yeah. or like whatever nonsense mechanism this is, first time. Yeah. I mean, at least we screwed up by cutting off the, the yeah. gas ram mounts, you know. Yeah, that's, that's, where, that's where we focused all of our mistakes. Yes, yeah, we, yeah, that was, that definitely set us back, ooh, 10 minutes? Thereabout, yeah. Yeah, um, the only real problem that we had with the bonnet was actually making it clear this front lip, um, and that was just a case of opening, closing it, making sure that it actually fit nicely, and now it actually goes down. And aside from clattering at that end, because we have no bump stops in, it completely misses all of the front edge. So that's really, really nice. It does need a little bit more working over at the corners, because obviously we put no time into really fitting this and this up against one another before when we built the bonnet and put this on, because we had no idea what the hinge was going to do. So yeah, that's come out really, really nicely now. And uh, Chris has just been welding up the front part, like the actual bumper, really. That, that is the bumper, bumper part of the car. Yeah, the wind was kind of screwing us on the weld. I've been trying to get across here and I haven't got a lot of time left before I've got to jump on a train out of here. So we were kind of rushing to get this down and you can kind of yeah. see in some of the weld is a little bit porous and quite unfinished. So we've got a bit of clean up there to do, but yeah. I think it's, it, it is coming together For pretty most, well here. And it's really, and it's, again, it's not actually warped too badly. It's got a couple of little dips in it, but they will come back out as we've managed to do in the, in the, uh, the past with the panels at the back of the car, so they'll lift back out nicely. There's really nothing too bad. It's, I don't want to say it, but it's almost like we know what we're doing. Not bad for a 20 minute job. Yes, yeah, literally it's taken about 40 minutes from starting putting this on to getting to this position. So it is easily the quickest framing and panel we've ever done. Oh God, yeah. So yeah, and I it's still, yeah. I'm still so, so pleased with how that goes. 
It's obviously there's still a lot of work left to do on the bonnet, cleaning up the edges and getting things in. We thought we were going to have to re-engineer some of the uh, supports inside to give the bonnet enough structure so it didn't actually bend, which is why we cut these gas rams off before. But yeah, it just it works. It works and I'm still amazed. And if you'd like to be amazed at the things we accidentally managed to do with very little planning, you can support us from as little as a dollar a month on Patreon. If you go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show, you can support us there. We have various different tiers. You can also jump on shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy one of these spiffy beanie hats or the various other paraphernalia that we're not wearing. Yeah, actually, tell a lie, you're wearing a shirt. I am, I'm wearing a shirt that you can't buy on the store because this was the original prototype that I got made up four years ago. So yes, you could buy one of our other shirts that look a lot like this, but are either black or gray. Or a cap, given it's coming up to summer rather than a beanie. But yeah, I mean, they all work. It's always beanie season in my mind. <laughs> And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone.